Thank you for tuning in to RTM Nation Online, where we believe that you will receive the abundance of peace, prosperity, security, stability, health, healing, and truth. If you would like to learn more about the ministry, click the link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into the message. I got a lot going on today. Meaning, I got on black pants, but they got white stuff on them. I don't know where that come from, but here I am. The weather is changing, and you know, I got ethnic lips. They ain't just small lips, so I got a little thing working on the bottom lip with chapstick just ain't doing. It's just doing its own thing. But you know what? I'm good. That's cool. A little other thing, a little, a little quick Smith story. We went to a wedding yesterday, and in going to the wedding yesterday, you know, it was a wedding with, with you know, my people. So it was, it was a wedding. And, and, and going to the wedding, what you, what you always look for is, okay, at some point in time, something is going to be ethnic. I don't care how pretty it looks. They're going to put a twist in there or something. And you know what? We sitting there, everything. And it was pretty. Don't get me wrong. It was beautiful. We loved it. It was relatives. We enjoyed seeing the family and everything. I'm like, oh, this is wonderful, baby. We got to see people we ain't seen in a long time. But here, to come, here come the procession of the people coming in. And you know how the wedding is. You got the, 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 the bridegroom and the, and, the, and the bridesmaids, and they're holding hands. And they just, you know, just walk up to the aisle because people are getting ready to get married. No, they didn't do that. They had like a step kind of worked out. And it wasn't just a forward step. It was a electric slide. Left, right, back to the middle, and then a back step thrown in there. So you know, at first it was cute. But they got a lot of these people. They're like, get your behind down the aisle and have get somebody get married now. But, you better look at me. The first time they did the left and the right and the middle and the step back, we was like, okay. About five minutes in, we looked at me with the eye like, they better get on up and down here and get married. Oh. But yeah, I got, I got a lot going on, but let's, that's, that's enough about me. Family, you know, we started off this year talking about resolutions, right? And we agreed that this time of year is, is pretty common to see people in the act of making resolutions. That's just what our culture, not just our culture, but a lot of people just do that this time of year, beginning of the year. And thinking through that, though, we also noted that a resolution is not something that's just reserved for the beginning of the year. Any, any minute, any hour, any day, a person can elect to pursue something better, to pursue being different, to pursue improvement. Now, the word resolution, at least in the manner that we're using it, that word resolution is very similar or it's a fancy way to say something that all of us as Wesley Chapel family are very familiar with, and that is a decision to change. The thing is, though, a resolution is not supposed to be wishy-washy. A person who resolves to do something or not do something, it could be either one, a person that resolves to do or not do something, they intend for that thing, that decision to be firm. Unfortunately, most people fizzle out quickly on their resolution. They just don't make it. Make it. it it's just like it stuns them to learn that getting to the end of their resolution comes with work, comes with effort. It comes with a participation on their part. It's almost like it surprises them. I don't know why, but it's like it does. They fall short of seeing their new reality materialize. In fact, many people fail at the same resolution year after year after year. Can you agree with me on that? Just giving you a quick summary to get us all on the same page. To sum it all up, masses upon masses of people start resolutions with good intentions, but they don't finish. They start, but they don't finish. That is a pitiful trend. Now, to help with that trend, what we did was we said, we 
want to get rid of or do our part to stop that trend of starting and not finishing, having a resolution and not getting it done, having a goal but not being able to see it through the finish line. And to that end, what we did was we gave everyone three tools to assist. Those tools, which you're going to see on the screen, came in three categories or using three terms. The first term, SMART. That dealt with successful goal development. The second term, cliff, that dealt with avoiding pitfalls. The third item that we discussed was the X game. And the X game involved giving someone a visual indication of their progress. So the SMART acronym, what that does is it instructs a person to improve their chance of success by creating or developing a goal that is specific and measurable. CLIF is an acronym that identifies the mental tendencies, the, 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 the framework of someone's mind that tends to sabotage a goal. The hope is if we identify those pitfalls for you that you could avoid them. The last one, the X game, the X game is a process. It's a process that provides a person with a visual indication of how they're doing in pursuing their goal. Basically what you do is every day in a yearly calendar that you actually pursue your goal, you put an X. The objective is to strive to have as many X's as possible and make them consistent and consecutive and never break the chain. <clears throat> Those were the three things that we've discussed. Now we're all up to speed thus far. Let's kick off into today. We can appreciate family, all the people that make it to the start, but getting to the start is not good enough for us. We are completion minded. Say this with me. I am. Completion minded. completion minded. Being completion minded means that you have to have a certain mindset. You have to have a certain gumption. You have to have a certain stick to itness. And to identify and specifically state our position, I located in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, something that absolutely expresses our point. In Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, King James Version, verse 8. And we're just taking the first part of this. It reads like this. You've heard it before. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. We're going to pair that with Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8 out of the Living Bible. Now let this one hit your spirit. Listen how they say it with an exclamation mark at the end. Finishing is better than starting. So what we, where we're at, family, our position is finishing is better than starting because I will be better at the end of the thing than I was at the beginning thereof. We all agree that we want to be people that finish not just people who start. But why do you want to be a person that finishes, Pastor? I'll tell you why I want to be a person that finishes. Because at the end of my finish, at the end of my goal, when I cross that line, I will be better than when I started. You see, at the finish line, I find a stronger me. At the finish line, I find a wiser me. At the finish line, I find a healthier me. At the finish line, I find a bolder me. At the finish line, I find a kinder me. At the finish line, I find somebody that is more faithful. I find somebody that is more loving. At the end of the thing, I shall be better than the beginning thereof. Amen. That's why I want to be a finisher. Amen. To be a finisher, we must stop that negative trend of failing to accomplish the goals that we set. If you want to be a finisher, girl, you got to finish. 
My brother, if you want to be a finisher, you got to make it to the checkered flag. In this session today, I'm going to share with you one more tool that helps us be finishers. One more tool. Got to give you another tool that helps us be finishers, not just starters. Now, the tool is the simplest of elements, though. And guess what? You got it already. You already have it there. It may be dormant, but you already got it. It may be inactive, but you already got it. And it is not something that we have discussed previously, so I am not referring to the Holy Spirit. Of course, I'm not going to keep you in suspense. Let's jump right into it. Go to Proverbs chapter 4. When you get to Proverbs chapter 4, King James Version, we're going to go to verse 5. A familiar passage of scripture that we've read over and over again pertaining to wisdom. It says this, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth, forsake her not, and she will preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Read this last one with me. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. We, we read that version just to give us all a, a proper frame of reference, because that's usually how we hear it. But it is the living Bible that really gets us to where we want to be. The living Bible, Proverbs chapter four, beginning in verse one, reads like this. Young men, listen to me as you would to your father. Listen and grow wise, for I speak the truth. Don't turn away. For I, too, was once a son tenderly loved by my mother as an only child and the companion of my father. He told me never to forget his words. If you follow them, he said, you will have a long and happy life. Here we go, picking up at verse 5. Learn to be wise, he said, and develop, if you got it, what is that? Good judgment and common sense. And he follows that up with saying, I cannot overemphasize this point. But let's keep going. Cling to wisdom. She will protect you. Love her, she will guard you. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. And with your wisdom, here we go again, develop common sense and good judgment. Now, the King James Version uses the words in, in its passage, get understanding. The Living Bible utilizes instead the words that are going to propel us down our discussion right now. Those words are develop common sense and good judgment. Mm. Everybody say common sense. common sense. In an effort to make our discussion crisp, though, I am going to take those words, common sense and good judgment, and I'm going to just lump them up into the single phrase or term common sense. That way, whenever we're referring to it, I don't have to keep saying common sense is good judgment. Common sense is good judgment. I'm just going to say common sense. But I want you all to know that I know. And I want you all to know that I want you to know that common sense and good judgment are different. The combination of common sense and good judgment, using them in tandem, pairing them together, gets you to the right decision. <clears throat> but they are not the same. What I've done is I've thought through what would be a good example to make that point. Because having common sense but not having good judgment does you no good. And having good judgment but not having a lick of common sense don't do you no good. They're different, but I'm going to talk to them with just the phrase common sense. But I need, give me an example that says that clearly they're not the same. Here's what I came up with. 
Anybody in here ever been to a circus? If so, raise your hand. Okay, that's a whole bunch of us. If you've never been to a circus, I'm sure you've seen one on TV, or even if you've grown up as a kid, they've been in cartoons. You watch some kind of movie where they got a circus going on. They can be very entertaining. They have a lot of acts going on, a whole bunch of activity going around. I mean, at the circus, you have acrobats on the high wire. They're flipping and flying through the air. They're, they're walking the tightrope far above the ground. You have, you have clowns running around and being silly. You got freaky stuff, like the man with the five arms. Just at the, at the circus, you just got all kind of stuff. You, you, you have even, look, you have animal trainers. The circus, that one setting, such a setting, has so many opportunities for us to compare common sense and judgment, it don't make no kind of sense. But we're going to focus on just one, the lion tamer. <laughs> Loved ones, common sense would tell you not to put your head in the mouth of a lion. Let that sink in. Common sense would tell you not to put your head in the mouth of a lion, but there you sit in the stands watching a person do just that. At that moment, it makes no difference how much common sense that person has or doesn't have. They have just displayed and described and become the epitome of bad judgment. Common sense and bad judgment go hand in hand to make the right decision. However, they are not the same. Thus, as we refer to common sense in our discussions, know that we are pairing it silently with also having good judgment. Everybody understand that. So when I say common sense, in the back of your mind, you need to also be saying, and pastor saying we should also have good judgment. That being clarified, there are obstacles, there are challenges, there are problems, there are situations, there are circumstances in our lives that can be overcome, done away with, kind of slowed down if we just would apply some good old Americana common sense. You don't have to pray about it. Brother, get off your knees and just apply some common sense. You don't have to fast about it. My sister, get you a meal. Grab you a biscuit and just apply some common sense. You don't need counseling. Stop trying to get an appointment on somebody's calendar to rehearse the problem and just apply some common sense. There are issues in our lives that common sense can go ahead and cause you to check the box and say it's done. Go to Ecclesiastes 7, King James Version. Common sense is an important part of our life. Common sense is a part of our life that we cannot and should not, should not do without. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, we're going to see something that we want to bring out and pull common sense up into its proper place. Because as believers, we are really good with the spiritual. But when we talk about common sense, for some reason, people are like, well, then that means that you don't have faith. No, you just need to apply some common sense. Amen. As the Living Bible said in Proverbs 4, apply some common sense. And I can't overemphasize that point. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 12, King James Version. For wisdom is a defense. 
and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. That same verse in the Living Bible says this. You can get anything by either wisdom or money. But being wise has many advantages. Family, if wisdom is a defense and has many advantages and the development of common sense benefits, helps, aids, supports a person who is wise, then common sense is also a critical ele ele element in life's defense. Follow the connection. If wisdom is a defense, and the development of common sense and good judgment is key to properly applying wisdom, then common sense is also a proper element to include in life's defenses. Common sense, that thing that you have, that thing that I have inside of us, is a key to us navigating this life properly. It's something that we already have inside of us. Here is the issue though. <laughs> Doggone it, common sense isn't necessarily common. <laughs> common sense carries with it that initial word common, but common sense can be far from common. What am I saying? I'm saying the definition of common sense carries the, the connotation that common sense is something that you're born with. The notion that common sense is just something that you automatically have. The Collins Dictionary defines common sense this way. Your natural ability to make good judgments, and to behave in a practical and sensible way. That definition, that definition alone kind of implies the fact that common sense is something that just comes to you. It characterizes the idea that common sense simply comes to a person through no effort. I believe that kind of notion is false. That is not where I stand. Say this with me. Common sense, common sense is not, is not something, something that is, that is unlearned. unlearned. Common, sense, common sense is not something that is unlearned. No. Common sense is not a gift. It's not a birthright. It's not something that's just an innate part of your DNA. No. Common sense isn't any of those things. Common sense is a learned mental capacity. It's learned, family. As a matter of fact, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, in the Living Bible, it kind of suggests that when it says to the audience, develop common sense and good judgment. If you got to develop it, you got to put some effort towards getting it. One psychologist put it in a more accurate way, it meaning, what is common sense? The psychologist said this, common sense is sound judgment derived from experience rather than study. So sound judgment, common sense. Common sense is something that is derived from experience. It don't just come to you. Common sense is something that is learned, and I agree with that. Turn to Luke chapter 12. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ even alludes to this fact in Luke chapter 12. Let me kind of set it up for you. He references common sense in a discussion with his disciples and others. Essentially what he's doing is he's trying to describe or put together a framework that says a person electing to have a relationship with God is just a matter of common sense. 
Now, a person who delays that relationship with God, with God is careless and in a theoretical and very practical sense, playing with fire. That person who delays is careless because delaying makes the assumption that you have all the time in the world to get it right in the future. So Jesus calls it careless because you really don't know when that time allotted for you to get to get it right is going to run out. The other part about it, though, he says a person who makes it a priority to get it right with God without delay is smart. That person is smart because they are going ahead and dealing with the issue now while they know time is available instead of waiting till later. He expresses that choosing God is not a complicated decision. Choosing God sooner than later, it is just a matter of applying some common sense. Listen to this. Luke chapter 12, Message Bible, starting in verse 40. I'm going to start at verse 40 because I want to point out another element in this passage, still dealing with common sense, but the, the, the more beefier part that we're going to get to to make our specific point is a little later in the same chapter. <coughs> Here we go. So don't you be so slob slovenly and care careless. Just when you don't expect him, the Son of Man will show up. Peter said, Master, are you telling this story f just for us? Or is it for everybody? So other people are around. <clears throat> the master said, let me ask you, who is the dependable manager full of common sense that the master puts in charge of his staff to feed them well and on time? He is a blessed man if he, when the master shows up, he is a blessed man if, when the master shows up, he's doing his job. But if he says to himself, the master is certainly taking his time, begins mistreating the servants and maids, throws parties for his friends, and gets drunk, the master will walk in when he least expect it, give him a, the thrashing of his life, and put him back in the kitchen peeling potatoes. <laughs> the framework there is, don't just think you got all the time to get things, all the time in the world to get things right, because time is always winding down. The day of reckoning is coming. At some point in time, you need to have already made the decision that you need to have made before the time runs out. The scenario can be summed up this way. In that, what we just read, the master gave the person a task. The person both knows what the master wants and how to do the task. The person knows both of those things, but the person fails to exercise common sense, which leads to a negative outcome for that person. That's important. Say that person. That person. Why is that important, Pastor? Because this account leads us to conclude the bad consequence is something the person brought on themselves. Let that marinate. <clears throat> the person had the opportunity and the good common sense to make the right decision, but elected not to make the right decision, ended up with a bad outcome, thus brought the bad outcome on themselves. The same is true with our lives. We set goals we want to achieve. We set resolutions we want to complete. Unfortunately, for many of us, because we don't apply common sense, hear me close, because we don't apply common sense or we have undeveloped common sense, we keep getting tripped up. That underdevelopment of our common sense keeps stumbling blocks, that's the word I'm looking for, stumbling blocks in our path. As a result, some negative outcomes are things we are bringing on ourselves. Go to verse 54. Leaning towards our specific point that common sense is learned. 
Look at verse 54, Message Bible, 54 through 59. Jesus, Jesus is still talking. Then he turned to the, to the crowd. When you see clouds coming in from the west, you say, storm's coming, and you're right. And when the wind comes out of the south, you say, it'll be a hot one, and you're right. Frauds. You know how to tell the change in weather, in the weather, so don't tell me you can't tell a change in the season. The God season we're in right now. If you have it, read verse 57 with me. You don't have to be a genius to understand these things. Just use your common sense. Family, there's a lot of things in your life that you don't have to be Einstein to figure out. You just need to apply some common sense, doggone it. There are things in your life that you can put down the tissue box and stop crying about. All you got to do is apply some common sense and get yourself out of that mess. Verse 57 again, you don't have to be a genius to understand these things. Just use your common sense. The kind you use if while being taken to court, you decided to settle up with your accuser on the way, knowing that if the case went to the judge, you'd probably go to jail and pay every last penny of the fine. That's the kind of decision I'm asking you to make. We would say it this, this way. It's a no-brainer. Jesus says that when you observe the world, Common sense can be one of the best things you have at your disposal. Common sense is a product of learning from the world around you. Jesus points this out. Jesus points out that individuals see storm clouds rolling into the area and people expect rain, and rightfully so. Why? Because they've observed that pattern happen over and over on previous times in their life. They know it. They've observed it. They recognize that is just how it works. There is a component, family, of achieving our goals that rises and falls on our application of good old-fashioned common sense. There is a component of being successful in whatever we do that hinges on our application of good old-fashioned common sense. Not prayer, common sense. Not fasting, common sense. Not reading the Bible more, common sense. Yes, as a believer, we know God's there. We know the Holy Spirit is there with us. You know we have Christ as our big brother and our savior. But there are some things that you can over-spiritualize when common sense can do you better than you trying to get into your word and figure out what you need to do when common sense is right at your disposal. There's a component, once again, of achieving your goals that rise and fall, that rise and fall on your level of good old-fashioned common sense. Using the analogy from Jesus Christ, if you are standing on the outside and you feel the wind pick up, you hear thunder in the background, you see dark clouds rolling in, you got that good sniffer and you can smell the moisture in the air. You should expect rain in your area. It shouldn't come at it at, at any, as any surprise. What are you saying, Pastor? The conclusion is easy. If you are observant in your life, if you are observant in your life, where, where, where am I getting to? Look, all of those things that Jesus talked about, 
all the, the, the more extended analogies that I gave. You can see the cloud. You hear the thunder. You feel the wind. You smell the moisture. All of that stuff tell you rain coming if you're paying attention. If you're being observant. Yeah. If you got your head out of, the sand, out of the sand and your eyes up and you're paying attention. But if, you might, if you're not paying attention, you might get caught out in the rain. If you are observant in life, sometimes the right decision is quite evident. The issue arises when we refuse to take heed to the evidence that is right in front of our face. And right there, we pump the brakes. We will dig into this more next time. Here's what I want to leave you with. Until we get back together, know that as believers, bringing stability into our lives requires certain things. Those things include recognizing God as our Father, knowing Jesus is our Savior, believing the Holy Spirit is our Helper, honing in and developing our application of common sense, and becoming those who finish what we start. With all of that being said, we'll pick up again next time. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. We pray that today's message was a blessing to you. If you would like to help us further expand the vision, simply text the word GIVERTM to the number 41444 or visit us online at www.revealingtruth.org. Now remember, Jesus loves you.